Thank you. 
join me for the prayer of confession, followed by your own silent prayer for her confession. Lord, your discipline is patiently awaiting your promise of power is to carry out your mission. Forgive our impatience, which is due to our blindness in not recognizing the coming of your spirit, and our failures to use the power you have given us. Let the wind of your spirit blow upon us, and once again bend the flames of your power in us. Hear the good news. The one who raised Christ Jesus to life will with Christ Jesus raise us to a new life. You may be seated. And at this time, I'd like to call Team Jesus forward. children's message is not going to work at all. <laughs> so I'm just going to say, look at the wonderful life and the blessings that we have been given. And I love those words in baptism when we say, uh, when we say, see what love the Father has given us, that we may be called children of God, because that is what we are. Uh, so remember, as we gather together, that we are children of God, lovingly held in God's arms. And God bless you, and you, and you, and you, and all of you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
God, we ask your blessing on us as we seek your living spirit to speak to us anew, that we might be alive and alert to what you have to say to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture passage today comes from what is traditionally known as the book of Acts in the Bible. Um, the Greek word is praxis, which means um, action. Uh, I don't know why they didn't name this the book of action, because that is what it is. Uh, we will <coughs> pardon me, uh, pick up on uh, Acts chapter 2, but what has come before this is the church had been told by Jesus to wait in Jerusalem, until the time that he would come to them and give them power in the spirit. And so they have gotten together. They have practiced loving one another. They have practiced loving one another so much. Not only did they gather for prayers and for hymns, um, <clears throat> but they, they share their resources in a, common, uh, in a common pot. And therefore, nobody goes hungry and nobody goes uh, in need. And everybody contributes to what's going on. So we pick up after they have practiced being people of love uh, with chapter 2, beginning with verse 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Um, I just have to stop and say uh, that the Greek word is epito auto, and uh, it means everybody was there, everybody. Uh, not, you know, not some folks said, well, we were out of town. Well, I just didn't get up this morning. Everybody was there. And that's when the Holy Spirit came. And I always remember Reverend Erickson here saying, I just want one Sunday when everybody's here. <laughs> because that's when the Holy Spirit comes. So thank you for being here because you're part of how the Spirit works. It doesn't work without people being together. I'm going to start over. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. I know there's more to that passage to read, but I want to get focused on what's going on. When the Spirit comes, everybody's there. They, they are in, uh, they're in this, this place where there are all sorts of other cultures, other people, other languages. Um, and, and they had, uh, they, they had, uh, walls between all these different people, right? Um, but the Christians who had been practicing loving one another had been paying attention because that love flows over and they had heard these other people and all of a sudden they start picking up on what people are saying and they have the ability then to speak in other languages, which is to say to bring the walls of division down. That's what's going on in this passage. But, but I get ahead of myself here. Um, because what I want to focus on is that sense of fire that came and rested on the heads of each of the faithful. The fire that came and rested on them. Because this is not the first time that fire shows up in the Bible. Um, in Exodus chapter 3, Exodus, that story of, of Pharaoh uh, and uh, his his empire that has been oppressing people. Pharaoh, who, uh, who is, is out there and being all about bricks and mortar and beatings and policies and schemes and rocks. And if you've ever seen the pyramids, you stand next to them and each of the blocks is this tall. Uh, and they're a man-made mountain. Uh, and there are a hundred uh, of them. And, and these are made by people. When I went to Egypt, they said, yes, these rocks were brought here by the farmers in their off-season because they loved Pharaoh so much. <laughs> That's the official story. But the truth of the matter is, it was people who were enslaved who were brought uh, to, uh, 
to, to the, and, and forced to build these, uh, these uh, man-made mountains, these pyramids, and all the other temples and buildings and roads. Uh, and it's all about the power of the emperor and the empire, of Pharaoh and his people. Um, it's about saying that they can use all of these technologies and these strategies to oppress people and to impress people, to make people know that they are the ones in power, the few are in power. Uh, they use the tool of power for themselves. And Moses stands up against that, that power, and then he becomes a fugitive. And he runs off to the hills where he's a shepherd, uh, trying to escape the posses that would come after him. And as he's a shepherd out there in the field, he looks up on a mountain, and there on the mountain he sees out of nowhere there's a fire burning. And he says, I think I'll go check that out. He goes up the mountain, and there's this bush that's burning but not consumed. A bush burning but not consumed and a voice that says, Moses, take off your shoes because you're standing on holy ground. He takes off his shoes and God says, I want you to stand against the powers and the principalities of Pharaoh and his empire, and I want you to set my people free. And Moses says, I don't even know your name. <laughs> uh, and God, God in God's own unique way says, my name, my name is I am who I am. I will be who I will be. I will cause to be what I will cause to be. I will create what I will create. That's what that one phrase means, which means God can't be hammered down. God is inscrutable, and God won't be stopped. God is free. And now Moses, in God's name, sets his people free. But it starts with that fire that burns but doesn't burn up. And it's amazing to me that the people of Israel take that image for themselves. They take that image for themselves because they are oppressed, they, are, they, they wander for 40 years in the wilderness, and yet they are never burnt out. They're never burnt up. They keep on burning with passion. Fire is an image that people of faith have had for a long time. And so it comes in the time of Pentecost. When Pentecost comes and, and the people have tongues of fire over their heads, which is to say their minds are on fire. They're thinking new. They're thinking in ways, I mean, what was it? Uh, John Paul Sartre, the great philosopher said, the cooking of a vegetable is the transformation of one object devoid of, devoid of consciousness into another object equally devoid of consciousness. I don't know why I remember that. I just do. Fire transforms. It heats. It changes one thing to another. Fire is part of what is this image of God who comes and burns up the junk and leaves the gold. Fire is this image that comes. And here it comes. Here it comes to the early church. God who is free like fire, who ignites people to be on fire, who helps people who feel burnt out but are never burnt up, the God whose name is free, the God of hope who comes and gives authentic hope to these people. On that day of Pentecost, when the Spirit comes to people, it comes to the early church, they too had been oppressed. They're oppressed by Rome. And yet suddenly a spark is lit and they feel on fire. It's a fire that breaks down walls and, and builds up people together. A fire that sits on the heads of every believer. Every believer gets the Holy Spirit. Young and old, men and women, Jew and Gentile, they all get it and it gives them a new consciousness, a new way of seeing. Uh, a new world is set before them in that vision that God gives to them, and they feel a passion to be God's people together. They feel a passion to burn with the love that they had experienced in Jesus Christ. Jesus made clear that it is, it is possible to live a life overflowing with love. 
And the Holy Spirit comes to believers to set us on fire, to do things that we didn't know were possible. The Holy Spirit is about that fire that transforms and makes new. I served in Peoria for a while. I, I, my church there overlooked the, the, the bluff, and down below is where Richard Pryor, the great comedian, uh, grew up. Uh, he, he was uh, at some tough times in his life, and he accidentally set himself on fire one day, and he went screaming out into the street. It was a horrible thing, but later on, being a comedian, he made fun of himself. He said, when you're on fire, people get out of your way. That's how it is with the church, when the church is on fire. People get out of our way to have us bring another new day, a new beginning. Fire. Is about power, God's power. A power that used in the right way can be, bring the greatest of transformations. I like that image of fire because it shows up so many times in the culture around us. Um, <clears throat> Katniss Everdeen uh, in The Hunger Games uh, is the girl catching fire. Stig Larson's heroine is the girl who played with fire. Harry Potter seeks the goblet of fire. Bruce Springsteen sings, he's on fire. Bob Dylan sings, this wheel's on fire. Eminem says, his tr fire truck's on fire. Metallica says, fight fire with fire. Adela wants to s Adele wants to set fire to the rain. And don't forget Elvis, a uh, hunk of hunk of burning love. And Bruce uh, and Alicia Keys singing, this girl's on fire. <laughs> All these images of fire that are out there. Because that's what God gives to us, a passion to burn with love. James Baldwin is the African-American writer, uh, just a profound thinker. I want to give a quote from him. He, he just, his, his, from his uh, essay, The Fire Next Time, he says, Love takes off the masks that we fear we cannot live without, and we know we cannot live within. He says, I use the word love here not merely in the personal sense, but the, a state of being, a, a state of grace, not the infantile American sense of being made happy, but the tough, universal sense of quest and daring and growth. The fire next time, he says. Well, I think what the Holy Spirit does is say, it's the fire this time, here and now for us. That's the blessing that God gives to us. The fire this time. Fire is this image. You know you've got fire in your symbol for the, the church, right? Not just this cross that, that I saw. You know, I remember looking out as a seventh grade boy out of my window and seeing the church on fire over here. Uh, but the Presbyterian church symbol has flames on it that are flames of fire because that's who the Presbyterians know that we are called to be. God's people of passion on fire. So the Holy Spirit is about people coming together, discovering how love starts to burn powerfully among us when we let the Spirit move freely among us. The Holy Spirit is about the catalytic power of God to transform us and then our power to transform the world. Uh, I, I am surprised by the Spirit because you never know when the Holy Spirit's going to show up, right? And, and all of a sudden things that you didn't think were possible become possible. That's, what's, that, that's what the Holy Spirit is about. Old ideas turn into ashes and God ignites the fire of Pentecost to transform us and to bring a new world. So I ask you, as this passage from the book of Action in the Bible says, that your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall dream visions, your maid servants, your men servants, the young and the old, the male, the free male, everybody, no matter what status they are, everybody gets to dream a dream and to dream together. So I'm here for the next few months to help us dream together to let that fire burn profoundly so that we can come to see what surprises, what, what transformations God is giving to Beulah Church and from Beulah Church to the world. 
Um, this takes a little bit of time, and it's a, you know, a lot of people want to hurry up and get to the next pastor, but you are not the same people you were 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So who are you now? And more importantly, where is God calling you to be? We'll take some time. We'll do some processes that I'll help you talk with one another um, and, and discover where the Spirit's moving in among us now. And we'll write up a report. And then from that, we have an understanding of what kind of pastor do we need to call in this church here and now. Um, I think it is amazing to see what can happen. Um, you know, but the, the, the questions that you might just be starting to think about are those questions of where is the Spirit speaking to you in your life, in your call to ministry? What haunts you in the middle of the night? What ideas bother? What's, what, what, what's going on in the world that bothers you? Where do you want to make a difference? The Holy Spirit might just have implanted a fuse in you and is waiting for that fuse to catch fire. And, and, and from that fire for had to have you share that with others to set the church ablaze with love. You know, um, I think the Holy Spirit is the core of what the church is about in Christ's name. Uh, this, this sense that, that where there is hurt in the world, the fire of the church gives hope. Where there is loneliness in the world, the fire of the church brings love. And where there is guilt in the world, the fire of the church brings grace. There is so much that we have been given by God, given to share. This is a time to let hope burn brightly within us, among us, in the church together as we pay attention to those sparky ideas, those, those fuses, those, those, uh, the, 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 those catalytic moments that come, and that we get ready for the Holy Spirit to ignite that fire among us. The fire, this time, get ready to feel the burn. Amen. Friends, would you please... Uh, as as we uh, as we praise God, stand together for our next hymn, number four fifty five. All creatures of our God and King.
of their sacrifices still echo. Uh, we remember the values of democracy and human decency, human worth and freedom that undergird that cause in that war. We pray that those values will never be forgotten. We ask your love be present among us, that we might truly be your people and live out the blessing that you give to us, for you have blessed us so richly. We thank you for this church and for the whole of the Presbyterian Church as we find ways to work together uh, to build one another up in faith, hope, and love. We ask for Christians, for, for the blessing uh, and unity of Christians everywhere that we might be exemplars to the world of how walls can come down and how love can be built up. We ask your blessing, holy God, and your grace as we move into the future, that you in your Holy Spirit might guide us and give us vision to be who you call us to be. We pray this in Jesus' name, and we pray as Jesus continues to speak among us when we pray together as he has taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, at this time we remember our blessing that we have been given and uh, the blessing that we have been given to give in offering our tithes and offerings to God. Let us, let us join in and in celebration of the song.
church gave a, a blessing and a charge to his congregation that they should go out into the world in peace. Forgive as freely as the Lord has forgiven you. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering. 